In this video presentation, we will discuss about canine distemper, one of the most important viral disease in dogs, under the paramyxoviridae viral family. Other important viral diseases infecting dogs apart from canine distemper are rabies and canine parvovirus. In this lecture, we will discuss in detail on canine distemper infection. Classification Paramyxoviridae family, classified under the Baltimore Group 5, with the order mononegaviral. Some of the veterinary important viral diseases under this family are canine distemper, rinderpest, and PPR under the genus Morbilli virus, and Newcastle disease under the genus of Eulavirus. Other diseases under this family are measles, mumps, hendrovirus, Nipah virus, human perinfluenza, bovine respiratory syncytial virus, and turkey rhinot rachitis virus. In this lecture, we will discuss in detail on canine distemper infection. Canine distemper. The other names for this infection are hard pad disease and caries disease. This disease is caused by the genus Morbilli virus. Based on tissue tropism, this virus is having target towards multiple cell, such as epithelial, lymphoid, and neuronal tissues. So they are termed as pantropic virus. This virus causes acute, contagious, demyelinating disease, affecting the central nervous system, respiratory, and gastrointestinal tract in dogs and other carnivores. Host range. This pantropic virus causes infection in domestic and wild canids, such as dogs, fox, coyote, jackal, and wolf. Other wildlife also get this infections apart from canids such as animals under the family, Felidae, Mustelidae, Procyonidae, Ursidae, Viveridae, and Hyenidae. During 2018, there was a severe canine distemper outbreak in Gear Wildlife Sanctuary, Gujarat. In this outbreak, 68 lions and 6 leopards are confirmed for this infection. Among infected, 28 lions of all age groups were dead. As per studies, the free-ranging dog population, that is, stray dogs around the sanctuary act as the possible source of this virus to wildlife. Young animals are highly susceptible for this infection, with very high mortality rate. Up to 100% mortality rate is seen in wildlife like mustelids. This viral infection, generally associated with a secondary bacterial infection, leading to kennel cough, caused by the bacterium Bordetella bronchi septica. Virus morphology. This virus possesses helical capsid, and also covered with lipid envelope all around. The entire virus is about 150 nanometer diameter. This lipid envelope is studded with two important proteins namely, the hemagglutinin protein and fusion protein. Among all, the hemagglutinin protein is the immunodominant protein, which play a major role in the antigenicity. Genomic organization. The genome is monopartite, single-stranded, and negative sense RNA. The genome length is 15 kilo base pair length. The viral genome encodes six proteins namely, nucleoprotein, phosphoprotein, matrix protein, fusion protein, hemagglutinin protein, and polymerase enzyme. The diagnostic tests mainly targets for nucleoprotein, that is N gene for identifying the viral antigen. As we already discussed, among all the protein, the hemagglutinin protein is the immunodominant protein, which play a major role in the antigenicity. This protein binds to host cell receptor. This H gene site is having a greatest genetic diversity, so they are used as tool for CDV genetic lineage identification. Antigenic property among the viruses under the family Paramyxoviridae. The paramyxovirus like Newcastle disease virus, possess all the three proteins. Fusion protein, hemagglutinin, and the neuraminidase. The genus Morbilli virus, possess two proteins. Fusion protein, and hemagglutinin. But the pneumovirus possesses only fusion protein. So, the canine distemper virus, which is under the genus Morbilli virus, possess two proteins, such as fusion and the hemagglutinin protein. The three viruses under the genus Morbilli virus, Canine distemper virus, rinderpest virus, and measles virus, has a common antigenic property. That is, all the three virus possess hemagglutinin antigen. Next, similarly all three virus possess fusion antigens which shares cross-protectivity. And last, none of three virus possess neuraminidase protein. So, these three viruses sharing a common antigenic property is termed as viral triad, or medipest. Genotypes. There are seven canine distemper virus genetic lineages, at various geographic locations worldwide, based on their variations in the H gene. The seven lineages are namely, 
America 1 Lineage, America 2, Asia 1, Asia 2, Arctic Like, Europe, and Europe Wildlife Lineage. This is previous documentation. At present, there are 17 canine distemper virus genetic lineages, at various geographic locations worldwide. These are the canine distemper vaccine strains. Under Steeport strain. And Rockborn strain. Under Steeport strain, is the strain used in the CDV vaccines in India and worldwide. This strain is related to, America 1 genetic lineage. Currently, the Rockborn strain is not in use. Distemper virus cannot survive more than a few hours in the environment at room temperature. They are easily inactivated by heat, drying, and most common disinfectants. Here, routine disinfection procedure is adequate to kill this virus. But, parvovirus cannot be decontaminated from environment using common disinfectants. Most effective disinfectant against parvovirus is bleach, that is sodium hypochlorite. Virus replication. The canine distemper virus enters the host by fusing the viral envelope with the host cell membrane. During fusion, the viral proteins like hemagglutinin, and fusion proteins may get integrated to the host membrane. Following entry, the virus replicates in the cytoplasm. Here, the genome is negative sense RNA. So, they cannot translate, or be infectious on its own. So first they must transcribe, to the positive sense RNA, by using virus-encoded transcriptase enzyme, that is, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Then, this transcribed positive sense RNA, which are similar to mRNA, can be translated into viral proteins. On the other side, the negative sense viral RNA are transcribed for complementary strand, for the transcription of negative sense viral RNA. Later, this transcribed negative sense viral RNA, and the translated for viral proteins, self-assembles to form virion. Transmission. The respiratory secretions, and the body excretions from the infected dogs, act as the principal source of this virus. This virus is having the portal of entry, through inhalation, that is through airborne route of virus entry. The incubation is on an average of 7 to 14 days from the entry of virus. These viruses are generally engulfed by the macrophages. But, the virus is not killed by this macrophage. Instead, the virus uses macrophage as transportation inside the host. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through the respiratory tract, the virus does its initial replication at the regional lymph nodes followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the spleen, stomach, intestines, mesenteric lymph node, and liver. Following secondary replication, the virus get distributed through the secondary viremia to the epithelium cells, central nervous system, with subsequent viral shedding through all the body excretions. In this infection, two stages of clinical manifestations are noticed. Stage 1. Mucosal phase. Where gastrointestinal signs are observed. Symptoms like fever, runny nose due to rhinitis, purulent eye discharge, lethargy, anorexia, coughing due to pneumonia, vomiting and diarrhea due to gastroenteritis are observed in this stage. Next. Stage 2. Neurologic phase. Where neurological signs are observed. Symptoms like tremor of head, circling, partial or full paralysis, seizures, constant crying, repetitive eye movement, muscle twitching. Convulsion with increased salivation and chewing motions are observed in this stage. Mostly this phase end up with death of the animal. Some of the symptoms like paralysis, and increased salivation are also observed in rabies infection, and can be difficult to distinguish. Symptoms on the eye, will also noticed, due to keratoconjunctivitis, and optic neuritis, that may lead to blindness. The picture at the right, showing the, hyper-reflective lesions on retina, that is called as gold medallion lesion. The picture depicting the, runny nose in puppy, due to rhinitis. The picture showing the, purulent eye discharge. The picture showing the, thickening of foot pad, due to hyperkeratosis. So, this infection also have nickname, called, hard pad disease. The recovered dogs from canine distemper infection, will have teeth abnormalities like, enamel hypoplasia. Old dog encephalitis. This is a chronic form of encephalitis caused by canine distemper virus, in mature dogs. Here the clinical sign are milder than in young animal. Some of the symptoms like, difficulty in walking, rare convulsions and circling are noticed. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the vaccination history against infection. And clinical symptoms, such as gastrointestinal and neurological signs in young animals. As we discussed earlier, some of the clinical symptoms like paralysis, 
and increased salivation are also observed in rabies infection, and can be difficult to distinguish. Next, laboratory diagnosis. For lab diagnosis, nasal swab, ocular swab, that is conjunctival secretions, blood, corneal impression smears, cerebral spinal fluids are collected from live animal. In dead animal, spleen, lymph node, kidney, lung, and brain tissues are collected. This virus can be cultivated or isolated in lab by two ways. Number 1. Animal inoculation. Here, animals like ferrets, dogs, newborn mice can be used for virus inoculation. The experimental canine distemper virus infection of ferrets, is used as a model to study the morbili virus pathogenesis. The second method of cultivation of this virus is, cell culture system. Here, dog kidney cells, varroslam cells, and ferret cells can be used. In these cells, cytopathic effect CPE like acidophilic, intracytoplasmic, and intranuclear inclusion bodies are characteristic. Next. Once the canine distemper virus is infected over the cells, the virus enters the host by fusing the viral envelope with the cell membrane. During fusion, the viral proteins like hemagglutinin and fusion proteins may get integrated to the cell membrane. So, this integrated fusion protein over the infected cell will make the infected cell to fuse with the nearby neighboring cells around, which is required for cell to cell spreading of virus. So, after fusion with the neighboring cells, this appears like an irregular shaped multinucleated giant cell. This type of cytopathogenic characteristic, is termed as syncytium. Here, the picture showing the syncytia. An irregular shaped, multinucleated giant cell. This is a cytopathogenic characteristic of a morbili virus over the cells. Inclusion bodies are generally visible in WBCs, conjunctival membrane and epithelial cells. Here, the picture at right, showing the intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies, which is red stained that is eosinophilic, oval structure. These are some of the laboratory tests can be done for diagnosis of this virus. For antigen detection, direct fluorescent antibody test, reverse transcriptase PCR by targeting the end gene, and DNA sequencing can be done. Direct fluorescent antibody test. Immunofluorescent assay. Most commonly used test for canine distemper diagnosis. This test is considered as one of the gold standard tests in canine distemper diagnosis, recommended by WHO and OIE. In this test, fluorescin, isothiocyanate conjugated, that is FITC conjugated anti-canine distemper antibody is used. This labeled detecting antibody is used to detect the canine distemper viral antigen in the test sample, or in the corneal impression smear under ultraviolet microscopy. For confirmation, that is for viral RNA detection. Reverse transcriptase PCR is done. Since it is RNA virus, first the RNA has to be reverse transcribed to complementary DNA, using the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Later, this complementary DNA will be used to conduct the PCR. For antibody detection, DVIR LISA is done to detect the presence of antibody in the cerebral spinal fluid. Generally, the vaccine induced antibody do not cross the blood brain barrier into cerebral spinal fluid. So, presence of antibody in the cerebral spinal fluid, offers an indirect way to evident the canine distemper infection. This test helps to differentiate, the antibody induced by infected and vaccinated animal. Prevention and control. By vaccination. For preventing this infection, a multi-antigen vaccine is used as vaccination in dogs. In this multi-antigen vaccine, the attenuated canine distemper virus, canine parvovirus, canine adenovirus 1 and 2 and canine perinfluenza virus are used, and prepared in a freeze-dried form. Generally this attenuated vaccine is injected along with the killed vaccine, comprising of leptospirobacterial species. Under steeport strain, is the strain used in the canine distemper vaccines in India and worldwide. This multi-antigen vaccination is done as per VSAVA guideline. That is a global guideline given by the World Small Animal Veterinary Association. As per the vaccination schedule given. The primary vaccination in the dogs is done at 6 to 8 week of age, intramuscularly or subcutaneously. Followed by two booster are recommended with 2 to 4 weeks apart. In order to maintain the protective immunity against these infections, revaccination is done, every year, that is annually. No specific, antiviral drugs, are available for this infection. Only intensive supportive therapy, and symptomatic treatment is done. Using intravenous fluids, anticonvulsant medications, antiemetics, antidiarrheal, corticosteroids, 
and antibiotics to prevent secondary bacterial infections are used. With this we are coming to the end of canine distemper. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.